Genesis 21, 1 And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. This is not tempting Abraham to sin as Satan does, but testing the strength of his faith. It continues to say in verses 2 and 3, And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went into the place of which God had told him. Once again, there is no hesitation on Abraham's part. He gets up early in the morning to obey God. Verses 4 through 14 go on to say, Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place far off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with the donkeys and I and the lad will go yonder, and worship, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand, and a knife. And they went, both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father? And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went, and took the ram, and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Jehovah-Jireh means the Lord will provide. Many people have a problem with God testing Abraham in this way. I can't blame them. It's hard to accept such a hard test from a good and loving God. In considering God's test, it's important to remember that God is good and holy. This is only a test. God would never have allowed his faithful servant to actually go through with it. Hence the command, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. It never entered God's mind to allow Isaac to die here. Other people have a problem with Abraham actually choosing to obey God in this way. I can hardly blame them either. It's hard to accept a godly man being willing to sacrifice the son God gave him to God. In considering Abraham's obedience, it's important to remember the entirety of Abraham's journey of faith up to this point. That's why I have walked through it from the very beginning, step by step, in these videos. Think of all the times that God had told Abraham that he would make a great nation of him. Abraham was 75 years old when his journey of faith first began, and it took 25 years for the promised son to arrive. 
By that time, Sarah was too old to be capable of bearing a child without a miracle. All that time, God had been promising Abraham a son and teaching him to follow and obey him. The many tests and challenges that he experienced taught Abraham dependence on God, obedience to God, and absolute trust in him. So when God told Abraham back in Genesis 21:12, In Isaac shall thy seed be called, that's what he meant. God doesn't lie or go back on his word. After all Abraham had experienced on this journey, Abraham knew that beyond all doubt. The only way that God could fulfill his promise to Abraham is if Isaac lived, even if that meant God would have to raise him from the dead to fulfill his word. Hebrews 11:17-19 says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. According that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So you see, Abraham trusted God to see to it that Isaac would survive this test and return home alive. In spite of all this, there can be little doubt that this would have created quite an emotional reaction in Abraham's heart. It would not have been much of a test if it hadn't. But the emotions did not override the absolute trust he had developed in God. We all have things in our lives that are special to us. God won't ask you to kill your child, but there are times that he does call us to make some pretty difficult sacrifices. If we trust him, he can help us to let go of those things. Maybe you sense him asking you to sacrifice your sinful nature and start living your life for him. If you are ready to take that first step in that journey, you can start with this simple little prayer. Dear Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and that you rose again the third day. Please forgive me for my sins and come into my heart and be Lord of my life. Help me overcome sin in my life and live for you so I will have joy when I see your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Get a Bible and start reading it to learn more of his will so you can live out His holiness in your life. If you are interested in understanding the story of Jesus' life better, you might like Emmanuel by April Marie. You can check it out at any of these websites, also included in the video description. Thank you for watching. May you trust God completely.